Information Minister Omran Zawi says combating terrorism in Syria and the region cannot be carried out away from the Syrian state and leadership. Dozens of terrorists are eliminated and their hideouts destroyed in Al Qunaitira, Darha, Aleppo, and Hama. A UN report affirms that the Azidis are being exposed to a genocide attempt by the terrorist ISIS organization. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Ira Dokikorian from the News Center in Damascus. Foreign and Expatriates Minister Walid Al Muallim received this morning the UN Secretary General's Special Envoy, Mrs. Sigrid Kag, and the delegation accompanying her. The conversation centered on Syria's implementation of its undertakings in accordance with the Chemical Weapons Prohibition Agreement and the decisions of the Executive Council in this regard. Emphasis was laid on the need to continue constructive cooperation between Syria and the OPCW and the closure of the Syrian chemical weapons elimination file. Mr. Al Muallim voiced Syria's keenness that it be dealt with as a state that is a signatory to the agreement without distinction or politicization. He added that the unprecedented success was due to the close and honest cooperation with the joint mission led by CAG and her team. On her part, CAG expressed satisfaction over what has been so far achieved, adding that getting rid of the Syrian chemical weapons was a positive precedence in the history of the UN and the Chemical Weapons Prohibition Organization. Dr. Maqdad had earlier held talks with CAG and the delegation accompanying her during which discussion revolved on relevant issues and ways of cooperation regarding them in the future. Syria's permanent representative to the UN, Dr. Bashar al-Jafari, has said the Israeli occupation authorities have never cared about the international organization or the resolutions issued by it. During a UN Security Council's session on the Middle East, al-Jafari said it was time for the UN to move to bring to account the terrorist turkish saudi qatari israeli alliance that seeks to destroy Syria through terrorizing the Syrian people, shedding their blood, and eliminating the Palestinian people with the objective of realizing the project of the so-called Israel's Judaization. Such illegal alliances, as Jafari added, set up by the USA and Britain outside the framework of the UN Security Council, have caused devastation, chaos, and terrorism in the world in contravention of the international law and the UN Charter's provisions. Information Minister Omran Zawi has said that combating terrorism in Syria and the region cannot be carried out away from the Syrian state and leadership. He affirmed that Syria's absence in the coalition and the lack of coordination with it would not change its stand about the importance of fighting terrorism. In a televised interview with the Syrian Arab TV, Zawi stressed that Ain al-Arab is a Syrian land and its people are part of the Syrian people and any idea to the contrary is a mere attempt to realize political objectives and deal a blow to the Syrian state and leadership. Azabi noted that Syria will not hesitate to practice its military, political, social, economic and human role towards all Syrian provinces, from the smallest village to the largest city. On Erdogan's talk about buffer zones considering Ain al-Arab as a strategic area, Azabi said, Ain al-Arab is a Syrian, not Turkish land, a fact that must be clear to everyone. Regarding the YouTube video released by the terrorists on taking under their control three aircraft at Al-Jarrah military airport in Aleppo, Azabi said, the three aircraft were old and out of work, which the terrorists tried to fly but were immediately intercepted by the Syrian Arab Air Force, which destroyed two of them as search is underway for the third. Russia's permanent representative to the UN, Vitaly Chorkin, has said one should not be surprised at the reports that talk about American weapons falling in the hands of ISIS, pointing out that this only proves the necessity of coordination with the Syrian government in this respect. 
It is necessary, Chokin added, that precise coordination be maintained with the Syrian government and any action must be taken on the basis of UN Security Council's resolution. It is to be noted that the American military command had declared that American jet fighters had dropped weapons and medical material to the inhabitants and the defense units of Ain al-Arab. However, when airdrop went astray but was later destroyed, lest it fell in the hands of ISIS and that the remaining airdrops were all properly delivered to the people of Ain al-Arab. Welcome back. A military source said that Syrian Arab army units foiled an infiltration attempt into Al Maruj area and the road leading to the Institute of the Scientific Research. The Syrian Arab army killed and wounded a number of terrorists and destroyed their vehicles. It also destroyed their dens in Talat al Kurum, Jaba, and Manat al Hassan in Al Qunaitira countryside. In Dara'a, a military source said that Syrian Arab army units eliminated dozens of terrorists in six different locations and inflicted heavy losses upon other terrorist groups in Dar al Balad. In Homs, Syrian Arab army units destroyed the terrorist den for Al Nusra Front in Al War area, including terrorist leaders. The Syrian Arab army also destroyed terrorist dens in Al Rastan and Jaz al Masadda in Homs countryside. In Hama countryside, Syrian Arab army units eliminated dozens of terrorists and wounded others in six different towns. In Aleppo, Syrian Arab army units targeted terrorists in five locations, scoring direct hits. In Idlib countryside, Syrian Arab army units targeted terrorists in several different areas, killing and wounding scores of them. In Homs eastern countryside, Syrian Arab army units foiled infiltration attempts from the village of Umm Sahrij towards Tulul al Hawa village, killing dozens of them. The Syrian Arab army monitored the movement of the terrorist groups in Al Jubeb farms in Al Mukharram, cutting their supply routes between Al Rastan and Hama countryside. Within the context of offering material and logistical support to army terrorist groups in Syria, Israeli occupation troops transported wounded terrorists into their hospital north of occupied Palestine. The Israeli Channel 2 reported that the Israeli army transported two wounded terrorists into Naharia Hospital for treatment, pointing out that at least 140 terrorists have been so far treated in Israeli jails. Secretary General of Iran's National Security Supreme Council, Ali Sheikhani, asserted that Iran was focusing on maintaining security and stability in Iraq and on cooperation with Iraq's armed forces in combating terrorism. During his meeting with Iraqi Prime Minister Haider al-Abbadi in Tehran, Shamkhani stressed that fighting terrorism and its supporters is a priority in the domain of joint cooperation between the two countries. For his part, Al-Abadi said that Iraq highly appreciates the cooperation with Iran toward of terrorism as it is fighting a wide-scale war in this domain. Al-Abadi also expressed his country's willingness to enhance economic and trade relations with Iran. Meanwhile, Iraqi army continued its operations against ISIL terrorist organization, killing a large number of terrorists, destroying their hideouts and vehicles in Al Ambar and southeast of the capital, Baghdad. Iraqi armed forces also seized the warehouse of ammunition and explosive devices in the area of Tel Dahab, south of Baghdad. In Al Ambar, west of Iraq, a security source said that security forces backed by the tribesmen have been fighting fierce battles with ISIL at Amiriyat al-Fallujah, leaving more than 30 terrorists killed or injured. In the governorate of Salah al-Din, the security forces supported by the people started to storm into BG district. Finally, also in Iraq, the UN Assistant Secretary General for Human Rights Affairs, Ivan Simonovich, condemned the crimes and violations of the...
human rights committed by ISIL terrorist organization against the Azidis north of Iraq, pointing out that the Azidis are exposed to an annihilation attempt at the hands of ISIL terrorists. Following a visit to Iraq, Simonovic said that the atrocities committed by ISIL terrorist organization over the last four months amounted to war crimes. Simonovic said that he had met more than 30 Azidis who told him about their bitter experiences at the hands of the Azidis, including one incident in which many of their relatives were eliminated at a school. With this, we conclude our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syrianline.sy. Now to latest business and market news with Vanny Gengen, but after a short break. <laughs>